What's up guys and welcome back to our channel. This is part 8 of GCP Digital Leader Real Exam Questions. Before we start, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications whenever we upload a new video. Without further delay, let's start. This is question 34 or the first question of this part. Let's read the question. An organization wants to migrate legacy applications currently hosted in their data center to the cloud. The current architecture dictates that each application needs its own operating system, OS, instead of sharing an operating system. Which infrastructure solution should they choose? Let's read the options. Option A, virtual machine. Option B, open source. Option C, serverless computing. And option D, containers. All right, right off the bat, some of you might already know the answer. It is A, virtual machines. But let's see why the other options are not appropriate. As always, we'll be eliminating the options. So let's start. Start with B, open source. Now, open source here doesn't really mean anything, right? You have open source softwares, you have open source codes. Open source codes, you can see them, they're available in GitHub. And basically, it's open source is anything, an application or a code that is available to the general public free of cost. You can see them on GitHub, you can see open source applications or softwares such as OpenOffice, which is sort of like Microsoft Office, but it's available to everyone free of cost. That is what open source is, but it doesn't make any sense in this question. That is why B is not the answer. Now C is serverless computing. Serverless computing can be used for smaller applications which don't have large amounts of data. Now we see the question requires legacy applications, which are more professional applications, so they need a server. Serverless computing won't go with that. It's not compatible. That's why C is not the answer. And option D, containers. No, when the question doesn't mention containerized applications, that you need to containerize the applications. All you need to, need to do is migrate the legacy applications from their data center to the cloud. That's all that is needed. So why would you need containers? That is why D is not the answer. Let's cross that off and we're left with A virtual machines, which as I said, is our answer. So once again, for question 34, B and A virtual machines is our answer. All right, let's head on to the next question, question 35. It says, how does a large hotel chain benefit from storing their customer reservation data in the cloud? Option A is on-premises hardware access to the transaction data. Option B, real-time data transformation at scale within an on-premises database. Option C, real-time business transaction accuracy at scale. And option D, physical hardware access during peak demand. Now the thing is, you're storing the data in cloud. Then why would you need an on-premises access? That is why in A and B we see on-premises mentioned, we, those are not the answers because the whole purpose of storing the data in the cloud is so that you don't have to deal with the data on-premises. That is why A and B are not the answer. Let's cross those off. And we're left with C and D. Now let's start with D. D is quite obvious. It's not the answer. It says physical hardware access during peak demand. Do you ever get access? To the physical server do you ever get access to enter the facility unless you are working in it but you do you, as a customer get access to the facility do you ever know where your data is actually going no right because it is a threat it, you can they can have security breaches right that's why it is not the answer they would never allow that so let's cross d off and we're just left with c that is real-time business transaction accuracy at scale and that is very true that is the main benefit that large hotels have from storing their customer reservation data in the cloud. So C is our answer. And once again, for question 35, C, real-time business transaction accuracy at scale is the answer. Let's head on to, to the last question of this part, which is question 36. In organizations, web developers and operations personnel use different systems. How will increase in communication between the teams reduce issues caused by silos? A. By assigning blame for failures and establish, establishing consequences. B. By combining job role responsibilities to ensure that everyone has shared access. Option C. By increasing data encryption 
to strengthen workflows, and option B by emphasizing share ownership of business outcomes. Now, it is never good to play the blame game, and that is exactly what E is telling us to do by assigning blame for failures and establishing consequences. It is not the answer. Blame game is never the game to play. That is why we'll cross A off. Now, B says by combining job role responsibilities to ensure that everyone has shared access. Now, it's telling you if there's developers and their testers. It's telling you to teach the developers the work of the testers and teach the testers the work of the developers. And now they become developer testers because they know both of the jobs and they have both the job role responsibilities. Now, when these people are actually working on the application or were working on the systems or whatever they're working on, on the data, you will never know which person has made, um, which person has caused a failure in the system or which person has made the mistake. That is the main concern of this thing, of this option. And also it is, it is not appropriate. It's not reasonable to teach the same, teach one person everything. The developer can't be a tester. That's the reason why the jobs are separated because they are complicated jobs and one person needs to be assigned to it. One person can't be assigned to both because it's so complicated. That is why B is not the answer. Now we're left with C and D. C says by increasing data encryption to strengthen workflows. Now if the data is encrypted, um, the teams won't be uh, able to see the data. They won't have access to the data, which is needed. We need access to the data. So we don't need to encrypt the data, right? So C is not the answer. It does not increase data encryption to strengthen workflows. And we're just left with a D by emphasizing shared ownership of business outcomes, which is our answer. Obviously, it's the only option left. Once again, I repeat D by emphasizing shared ownership of business outcomes is the answer for question 36. All right, guys, that was the end of this part. Once again, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay tuned whenever we upload a new video. Also, please make sure to leave a like and a comment down in the comment box. That was the end of part 8 of GCP Digital Leader Real Exam Questions. See you guys in the next part.